guys. So for today, I'm going to be answering some questions that I got from some of my subscribers. And one of the questions was, how do you approach a restaurant if you're looking to sell your product to them? And it might be a dessert or a baked good that they don't really have on the menu already. What is a great way to approach them and ask them if they want to add that to their menu? So today I'm going to answer that question here on Marketing Food Online. Okay, so right to the question. So I had one of my subscribers, thank you very much, by the way, for sending me this question. It's actually a great question, and there's a lot of subscribers who are probably in the same boat or looking to do the same thing. So hopefully this video will help out more than just your answer. Um, so I'm looking to bring a product to a local restaurant, and it is a dessert product or possibly even a baked good, whatever it may be. And you're thinking to yourself, well, how do I approach them? Like, what would be a good way or a professional way, or how would I present it to them? So from my own experience, and the reason why I say this is actually about four or five years ago, um, there was an Italian restaurant locally here that I we had frequented quite often. Uh, but many of the desserts were kind of, I don't want to say boring, but just cheesecakes and the same old thing that you get um, uh, slices of cakes, maybe even ice cream. There was nothing unique that was really a unique dessert that would kind of attach itself to the menu, which was all Italian food. Um, they even had a cannoli. Uh, but they didn't make it there. Everything was brought in, and you can kind of taste and you can tell that it wasn't something freshly made. So we actually have a line of Italian cookies. Of course, owning an Italian uh, bakery and, and uh, gelato and sandwich shop, we had all these that we were making at the time. Um, so I had about half a dozen that I brought in. And tip number one, before I get into how I actually presented it, um, if there's a specific restaurant or uh, business, if it happens to be a coffee shop, ice cream, whatever it is, um, I would recommend, highly recommend that you frequent it before you approach them. This is really important. Before you approach them, go there frequently or, or, or at least go there about a half a dozen times. Spend some of your money, okay? Buy some of their products, whatever it may be. If it's a restaurant, sit down and have lunch, okay? Um, and occasionally maybe just give a compliment to uh, the waitress or even ask the owner to come over and say, you know what, we've been coming here so often, I love the food, et cetera, et cetera. There's a reason for that. You want to build up a positive rapport with the owner or manager, whomever it is that's in charge or owns the local place, okay? You want to have that rapport prior to you going in. It's super, super important that in the world of business, it doesn't matter what type of business, by the way, setting aside, of, setting aside the food aspect of what I'm about to tell you, uh, businesses are relationships. It's not honestly about services or the products. It is not. It's deeper than that. It is about relationships. And if you are a business owner and you want to do business with another business, you want to have that rapport, okay? The relationship you have with them is the starting point. It is the stepping stone, if you will, for selling them anything, okay? You don't want to just go in there out of the blue and say, hi, I make cookies locally. Do you want to put them on your menu? It's not going to work. If you build up a relationship and you've gone there frequently and you've frequented the actual business, it makes it a lot smoother and a very good likelihood that they're going to take your product on board and at least try it out, okay? So rewind back what I was starting to tell you about. After you've gone there a few times, then what you want to do is you want to bring samples. You don't want to bring, I would not recommend on the first interaction with a manager or the owner of a restaurant. Don't bring in sell sheets and business cards and all of this. Don't bombard them with that. Just strike up a very nonchalant, very easy and smooth conversation. Even if you sat down and had just a cup of coffee and you said, oh, by the way, is, you know, is Mark in, the owner Mark, can I talk to him for just one second? Have him come over to your table. Or if you're checking out and you're paying for something before you leave, say, oh, by the way, is the owner here? I just wanted to ask him a really quick question. And when he comes out, what you want to do is you want to introduce yourself. And what I'm telling you is actually how I handled it when I approached the Italian restaurant and how it went so smoothly, okay? Because we had eaten there quite often. They kind of knew us because they saw us in there. So you want to talk to the owner, talk to the manager, and say, look, uh, by the way, I have a, a local business. Uh, I'm baking, uh, I have these freshly baked cookies or I do pastries. Um, and I see on your menu, you guys have a handful of desserts. And I thought maybe you might want to add um, something different, something new. Um, would you mind if I came back in and I just brought you some samples of some of the products? Uh, would that be okay? And most of the time, I would say 90% of the time, they would say, sure. Now, that sure or the yes, bring in samples doesn't necessarily mean they're going to carry it. But it gets the ball rolling, and you've done it in a professional way that's really relaxed, and it's not so in your face. Hey, here's my business card. Here's some samples. I want to sell this to you. Buy it. Buy it. You don't want to approach it that way. 
So you say, look, I'm going to come in. I'll be back in a couple days. I would love to just bring you some samples. Then bring them samples, okay? And on the second time you come in, then what you should have with you, maybe not necessarily on you, but maybe in your car or you have in your briefcase or whatever you've got with you, just bring in the samples. And if he says, wow, these look great, how much are they? Or do you have some other information? You know what? I do, as a matter of fact, let me go to my car really quick and get that for you. You get a business card. You get your sell sheet. If you don't know what a sell sheet is, I'm going to sum it up in a very less than 30 second uh, explanation. A sell sheet is a piece of paper that sells your product. And what I mean by that is it's got the information about the product, the packaging, the cost, the flavors, et cetera, et cetera, and even maybe one or two pictures. But then you could give them a sell sheet, okay? And let the sell sheet do the selling because that's what it's actually for. Now, with that being said, you want to keep it short and sweet. You know that managers and owners of restaurants are super busy. You don't want to sit there and have a lecture about why your product needs to be on the menu. Give them the samples, give them the information, and have a nice day. You know what? I'll keep in touch. I'll give you a ring in a few days. Would that be okay? And the gentleman says, okay, yeah, that sounds great. That sounds great. Thank you so much. Then in a few days later, you follow up with a simple phone call and say, hey, you know, hey, Mark, I just wanted to follow up. How'd you like those? And he can say, wow, these are great. You know, I've never thought of adding this to our menu. It's such a great item, such a great idea too. Um, so let's place an order. Now, if you get to that stage or that point, then you need to be flexible with your quantities because you have to understand as a business owner, if you're bringing in a freshly made product that really can't be frozen, they're going to have to sell through it quickly and it takes time to incorporate a new product, not only on the menu, but in the restaurant, uh, in the customers that come in, they're not going to expect that. So it takes some time to kind of get into the into their system, if you will, okay? So do it slowly, do it incrementally, do it little by little. Don't expect a thousand piece unit order from one restaurant and you know, the day that you drop it off. That's not how it works. Go in there and just take your time and build up the report because the thing is a lot of mom and pop or independently owned restaurants have a much easier way and easier buying power that they have because they are the owners and they're the managers. You don't want to go to Chili's or TGI Friday's. National chains are not the place you want to go to right off the bat. A local chain that's a family-run thing or a family-run business, that's the way to go. But do it slowly, okay? And do it, do it intelligently, okay? You know that they're not going to buy a bunch of to start with. But the other good thing I was going to tell you that's really important is a lot of these restaurant mom and pops, they have like two or three or four locations, right? Um, there are, of course, some of them that have just one. But a lot of them have, um, there's actually a chain, or not a chain, but a family business coming in here that they've got, I think, two or three locations. And we've already struck up a conversation with them in regards to carrying some of our products. So if it's two or three restaurants, then you say, look, we would be, we could definitely handle or we could manage carrying two or three of your restaurants. We would love to bring these on board, you know, and put them on the menu. So those are the types of conversations and interactions you want to have. You don't want to necessarily be in their face. You don't want to uh, be pushy about it. Just ease it in little by little, and it's a much more professional way to do it. And then once you have that one, and you've got experience now in pitching your product, then you could go to that local coffee shop, or maybe it's a, a tourist uh, tourist area uh, that has a lot of restaurants, and they're all you know independently on little bars or little uh, cafes. Those are the places too that you might want to hit up if you're in a very touristic area. If you're like in Orlando or if you're in New York and it's the heart of New York and, and you're, uh, you've got a lot of places that have a lot of tourists, they love locally produced products. So with that being said, I'll keep it short and sweet and I hope that that answers your question. And of course, if you have any more questions about this, just let me know down below in the description and I will get to them as soon as possible. Uh, one last note really quick, uh, just to put a little plug in for our, our website that we have a lot of new um, services and a lot of free stuff on there too, uh, a lot of articles and resources to help you out with your food product and creating a food product. So if you can, let some of your friends or fr family know about Marketing Food Online channel. And as always, I sincerely thank all of you, uh, all the subscribers that we have, and uh, we're approaching 5,000 subscribers. And for us, that is a big milestone, and we appreciate each and every one of you guys and all of the questions and all of the positive feedback it has actually motivated me to uh, do a lot more videos because I've got a booklet of probably a thousand videos that I'm looking to do um, so little by little I'll put my uh, my videos out there along with the resources and I thank you guys sincerely